My next guest is Barbara Humpton, President and CEO of Siemens USA. Before we begin our conversation, I want to note that although Siemens is a sponsor of today's program, we feel Barbara brings an important perspective to this national mobility conversation. We wouldn't want to do it without her. Barbara, it's great to see you. And I just say, I don't, you know, I, I don't know if it happens every day to you, but to have the White House Chief of Staff, you know, tweet out something you said, you know, why don't you share with us what, what Ron Klain uh, tweeted out uh, that you said? We'll start there. You're muted, my friend. You're muted. Barbara is muted, folks. Of course I go. am. Yes. <laughs> Steve, now you're first unmuted. Of all, great to be with you and really looking forward to this conversation. And yes, I heard from Ron a little earlier today. I have been really raising my voice about this whole subject of of infrastructure being broader. I mean, as we've just heard from Chairman DeFazio, there are so many things here that we ought to be able to agree on. So I'm raising my voice to say, not only is it important that we define infrastructure broadly and build the infrastructure that we need for American leadership and prosperity for the next century, but we as businesses also need to step forth and be responsible in a dialogue with government about how we're going to pay for it. Well, Barbara, we have some questions in the audience, and I'm just going to weave one in early because I think it's related to where we're going to go in this conversation, that we're talking about things beyond bridges and roads. Uh, and, and Pete DeVazio, Chairman DeVazio, was just talking about vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communications and the important part of it. And John Wiley of Zebra Technologies has asked, how soon will 5G LTE be an important factor in mobility? And so I'm interested in this world of mobility of the Internet of Things, but also the Internet of lots of moving things, and wonder you know, how you see that. And I think Chairman DeFazio is saying that world may be in jeopardy by some bad policy decisions. Let's see. In jeopardy, I, I have a feeling that there are certain things that we will manage to make happen. I mean, American ingenuity, American innovative spirit is strong. And all you need to do is uh, see the world coming to the Consumer Electronics Show to see all of the innovation that's going on around transportation. Connected e-mobility is absolutely a trend. We are headed in that direction. The question is, how fast do we want to get there? with true um, investments on the part of government, both at the federal as well as state and local level, we can see the infrastructure uh, being put in place to help us rapidly move through the transition. What do we need to make this possible? We are gonna need strong communications background, uh, uh, backbone for all of us. We're also really committed, and especially at Siemens, we're committed to this concept of open standards. You see, we've seen, just look back over the last century of innovation in the United States, and you'll see that we launched federally funded programs that allowed us to lay down a foundation for some objective, be it a space program, be it highways, mm. et cetera, be it the internet. And then what we've been amazed by is how innovators and entrepreneurs have been able to build with those building blocks something we never could have conceived of when the effort was originally started. When you look at your map, you know, I always used to go down to like Disneyland and the old Walt Disney days where you had the thing and you can kind of look at a little mobile of, you know, the future of transportation. Sometimes I feel like that system, which was cool at one point, is very rickety today. When you think about the future of mobility and what needs to be in that, whether it's retrofitting and improving rail or things we've already got, but adding and layering on new forms of transportation and mobility possibilities, what does your playground look like? Yeah, and we're getting a chance to see a lot of this, not only because of our role as leaders in transportation systems, like my colleagues in mobility, who are building the, the rail systems for cities across the country, uh, but, but we're also working with companies uh, through our digital tools, the software that we build for manufacturing that helps people ideate the future. And what we're beginning to see is a future of air travel, which is includes supersonic flight, it includes electric propulsion, it includes new forms that we hadn't seen before. So we know that air is going to transform. We know that, as we've just heard from the chairman, we know that the interoperability, the intermodal nature of mobility is 
always being improved. But one thing that's crystal clear, we see that the future of mobility is autonomous, connected, and electrified. Those three major trends are informing a lot of decisions that are being made in the mobility space right now. You know, I know that um, you folks have done a study that looks at the 100 largest American cities and, you know, I don't know if you heard my uh, interview with Mayor, uh, Mayor Vi Lyles of, of Charlotte. I, I really enjoy talking with her every time. And I, and I asked her, I said, have, did you see the movie Who Framed Roger Rabbit? And, and she had not. But, you know, in Who Framed Roger Rabbit, the plot of the movie is that, that, you know, the automobile industry wipes out light rail. They wipe out rail and, you know, it becomes a world. And so she talked about Charlotte and its history and how those same kind of tensions had, had existed. And, you know, I guess as you look at cities and look at the fact that so many don't have rail options, um, I don't know, does your head explode? I mean, what, what, what can be done uh, in that world? Is it really, really hard to bring rail into cities? What are the impediments? I think uh, bringing rail to cities is actually one of the greatest opportunities we have. I, I don't know how many people noticed that during the pandemic, it was often our rail systems that were bringing our essential workers into the hospitals and the, the critical infrastructure areas where we really needed them online and supporting. So for especially for workers who aren't in a position to own a car, rail is a fantastic option. Then you look at it from the other aspects of what does this do for us when it comes to our sustainability objectives. And you realize the number of cars we take off the road with rail systems, it's phenomenal. And then space. I, I, my favorite demonstration is something that our head of mobility in the US, Mark Buncher, shows us. And it's an, it's an easy illustration of a crowded highway full of cars, people sitting six, eight, 12 feet from each other. And then that same number of people seated in a rail car and just how efficient overall rail is. Now, for 40 of our largest cities here in the U.S. don't have access to rail. They haven't put in their own systems. And, and we've, we are really making a concerted effort to get discussions going and make sure that we open people's eyes to the potential. Barbara, you know, one of the questions I want to ask you, because, you know, Siemens, um, I'm sure people know, is a huge, huge firm. And I'm just interested, sometimes firms like yours have a great team and they innovate. And on another hand, you know, when you kind of look at the transportation sector, you know, we're talking to folks from Zooks and, and Neuro and others today, these, these little firms of, you know, that are coming in that are transforming the innovation map. I'm interested in how Siemens works with and cooperates with the small innovative players that you may not own yet um, that are also tied to, you know, sometimes local community colleges and universities, that other broad ecosystem out there. How do you... I want to give people an understanding. It's a very dynamic innovation space right now out there, and not everyone in the there is Siemens. How are you working with those companies? Well, you've put your finger on the whole secret of how to thrive, survive, and, and grow in today's economy. Siemens is, I always think of it as a 173-year-old startup because <laughs> it's a company that has innovated through all four industrial revolutions. And, and part of this is you realize that most innovation happens with two people over a napkin, drawing pictures of what could possibly be. So we make a really conscious effort to um, invest in innovation externally is a really important facet here. So uh, for instance, we're working with our venture capital arm, Next 47. We were founded in 1847. This is looking for the Next 47. And they will invest in companies that are in these market segments we serve. We try to take a large enough stake in the companies that we actually get a board seat, that we become the first phone call. But our whole goal is to give these companies access to our portfolio, the people and, and uh, problems that we're working on and see if we can help them scale faster. We do other things to encourage um, innovation inside the company, but one really good example of this kind of ecosystem innovation is our e-mobility partner ecosystem. We've actually joined forces with 20 other partners, some are OEMs, others are innovators in the way uh, electric vehicles will actually, service will be provided, et cetera. And, and through that partnership, our goal is to work together to accelerate the adoption of electric vehicles and really get this engine started. 
Well, Barbara Humpton, uh, President and CEO of Siemens USA, I just want to tell our audience, you know, go to Ronald Klain. It's actually his official account, White House Chief of Staff, you know, at WHCOS. And he and he tweets out this story from from Yahoo about Barbara Humpton and what she said about transport, uh, transportation infrastructure. And uh, Ron Klain says business leaders know infrastructure is a lot more than just bridges and roads. Thank you for that. That was kind of cool as a preamble to this morning. Uh, Barbara Humpton, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you, Steve.